and welcome to Insight Ophthalmology. We were talking about the hypopigmented lesions of retina and in my previous videos we talked about the drusens and the hard exudates. Today we are studying the cotton wool spots. So what are these cotton wool spots? Cotton wool spots are also called the soft exudates and they, they are called cotton wool because they look like the cotton wools. They are small yellowish white in color or sometimes they can be grayish white in color. They are slightly elevated and they look like clouds. That means they do not have a well-defined border like that of hard exudates. And as you can see, they are much bigger in size compared to the hard exudates and they are more anteriorly located. That means they are located in the nerve fiber there. Okay, yeah. So cotton wool spots rarely cause vision loss unless they involve the fovea. And typically these cotton wool spots will resolve in about 6 to 12 weeks of uh, age and uh, though they may last longer in diabetes. So what I mean to say is to resolve this cotton wool spot it takes about 6 to 12 weeks that is about 3 months time. Coming to what causes cotton wool spots, so the main problem is the retinal ischemia. So that retinal ischemia occurs secondary to obstruction of a retinal arteriole. So whenever there is an obstruction to the retinal arteriole either because of an embolus or because of a thrombus that leads to decreased blood supply which is called ischemia and because of ischemia what we get is hypoxia. Hypoxia is decreased oxygenation as the axon which actually consists of a cell body body and then it has an axon the nerves which have sorry the neuron which has cell body and the axon the axon will have a constant flow of the axoplasm and for that it needs oxygen so whenever there is a focal is, uh, hypoxia this axoplasmic flow will get blocked and subsequently there will be deposition of the intraaxonal organelles and collection of their it at one location and as they collect get collected at a particular point the nerve axons will look swollen under the light microscopy and those swollen ends are called the cytoid bodies. So our cotton wool spots are nothing but cytoid bodies that is a collection of the intraaxonal organelles because of the blockage of the axoplasmic flow in a normal neuron. So this is the same thing that you can see on the light microscopy and you can see the cytoid body over here this is swollen uh, nerve fiber layer in which you can see this dark staining nucleus which is nothing but actually collection of the various organelles within that axon coming to causes of cotton wool spots so the causes can be divided into various causes but the end point is the same and that is ischemia so the first cause is the ischemic causes so the conditions which will cause decreased blood supply to the retina these are diabetes retinal vein occlusion ocular ischemic syndrome severe anemia in which the hemoglobin uh, itself is decreased so the oxygen carrying capacity is decreased carotid artery obstruction in which the blood supply will decrease and again preeclampsia which is associated with high blood pressure leading to uh, vasoconstriction and because of that again there is decreased blood supply to the retina and leading to cotton wool spots then we have various embolic causes in which the thrombus from somewhere else in the body can get dislodged and come to the retina and lead to decreased blood supply so the embolus could be coming from the carotid which is called carotid emboli it could be coming from the infective heart uh, walls which is called cardiac emboli from the deep veins of the legs so deep vein thrombus or emboli and then in purchase retinopathy also we have white blood cell emboli severe chest compression long bone fractures in which we can have the fat embolus then we have amniotic fluid embolization which can also lead to cotton wool spots then there are certain infectious conditions which are associated with cotton wool spots particularly important is the hiv aids that is human human immunodeficiency virus and uh, then we have neoplastic conditions like lymphoma leukemia metastatic carcinoma hodgkin's disease in which it is the tumor cells which are going to block these blood vessels and again they are going to cause the ischemia then we have immune mediated conditions in which the antigen and antibody complexes they are going to get deposited in the blood vessels leading to the ischemia 
then there are further causes like the blood diseases so there could be some problem within the blood itself like the aplastic anemia in which the bone marrow will not produce adequate rbcs therefore the hemoglobin will go down and the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood will decrease because of which again it will there will be hypoxia and because of hypoxia there will be cotton wool spots similarly in dysproteinemia pernicious anemia in which there is b12 deficiency there will be a similar mechanism which will lead to anemia leading to hypoxia and cotton wool spots then in certain conditions the blood can become thicker in consistency which is called the hyperviscosity syndromes in which we have uh, defective immunoglobulins present in the blood like in multiple myelomas or waldenstrom macroglobinemia in which the globulins are actually very large so that's why they are called macro and that's the reason they are going to block the blood vessel leading to ischemia then there could be some conditions inherent with the patient which will lead to excessive coagulation because of the coagulation there will be thrombus formation and because of the thrombus which is nothing but the clot there will be ischemia so these could be factor 5 uh, laden or prothrombin hyperhomocystinemia protein s deficiency and so on and so forth So cotton wool spot how does it look on a fundus fluorescent angiogram the cotton wool spot is actually present in the nerve fiber layer so therefore it is going to block all the underlying choroidal fluorescence so because of that uh, blockage of the underlying choroidal fluorescence we are going to see a focal hypofluorescence area that means a black area wherever the cotton wool spot is present moreover since it's present actually in the nerve fiber layer uh, co a cotton wool spot is also going to block the underlying blood vessels uh, for us to see so we are not going to see even the underlying blood vessels since the blood vessels are also present in the nerve fiber layer now fluorescent angiography will also show areas of retinal capillary non perfusion since i told you that the cotton wool spots are mainly associated with ischemia and therefore it is very obvious for us to see certain capillary non perfusion areas where the uh, capillaries are not getting adequate perfusion or adequate blood supply in the on the ffa So as you can see this is a case of ischemic diabetic maculopathy so there was a uh, cotton wool spots and because of the cotton wool spots you can see these black areas which are actually representing the cotton wool spot and along with that you can see this uh, macular area which is totally blackish in color which is because of that the i mean because of the capillary non perfusion area so you can see the choroidal fluorescence is not so well defined in this case there are various areas of capillary dropout that means areas where the capillaries are not present so that indicates that there is ischemia present and along with ischemia because ischemia leads to cotton wool spot that is also presenting as hypofluorescence in this ffa picture So let us come to the uh, individual causes the most important ones which can lead to cotton wool spot and the diabetes mellitus is the most common cause of cotton wool spot So whenever we see a cotton wool spot and a case of diabetes usually there will be other features which will help us in diagnosing that the cotton wool spot is coming because of the diabetes so the other things which we see is presence of microvascular changes which are called irmas and then we have venous dilatations bleeding and sometimes hemorrhages along with microaneurysm which are quite specific of diabetes mellitus and of course on the fundus fluorescence we are going to see extensive capillary non perfusion areas and the microaneurysms will get stained and look like punctate staining and the, all the venous changes will also get enhanced so wherever there's venous bleeding or venous looping all that also will get uh, enhanced on an ffa so this picture is not so clear i'm so sorry but this is the cotton wool spot and then you can see certain areas of hemorrhages certain areas of irmas all that disturbance associated with the retinopathy of diabetes and because of that we have cotton wool spot also associated Then the second cause is severe hypertension. Hypertension is also usually associated with cotton wool spot, and along with that, we are going to see narrowing of the arteriolar uh, arterioles. That is called arteriolar narrowing, and we will see AV changes. Uh, and what we see in in severe hypertension is this flame shaped hemorrhages, and in in later stages, we are going to see a macular star formation and disc edema. Now, in my previous videos on heart exudate, you can refer uh, for to know more about the macular star formation in case of uh, hypertension. So over here, you can see the vessels, and in here, you can see there is a 
thinning of the arteriole or the artery in this area similarly here the thickened artery is crossing the vein and leading to classic av changes similarly here you can see a whitish uh, reflex which is actually called the copper wiring and over here you can see the disc is normal but here you can see there is a macular star formation the hard exudates are radiately uh, radiating from the macula this is called macular star formation and this is the last picture over here which shows that there is grade 4 hypertension in which you can see actually cotton wool spots because of the disc edema which occurs in these cases and along with that we can see the macular star formation also. The other cause of cotton wool spot is the retinal vein occlusion. It's very obvious that vein occlusion will lead to um, ischemia because of the backflow, uh, because of the venous stasis and because of the venous stasis even the flow in the arteries will be affected leading to ischemia. This retinal vein occlusion, it is particularly the ischemic retinal vein occlusion which is associated with the cotton wool spot. And what are the other associated features that we find in retina to diagnose that it is coming from the retinal vein occlusion? So in retinal vein occlusion, we will see cotton wool spot along with the flame shape and blotchy hemorrhages. Actually, the hemorrhages are present in all the layers of retina during a vein occlusion. So if you see a tomato splash appearance or a pizza pie appearance, it is more in favor of the retinal vein occlusion. And fundus fluorescent angiography will obviously show venous staining along with capillary non-perfusion areas and all that blood uh, hemorrhages, blood uh, blood and cotton wool spot will look as uh, blocked fluorescence or hyperfluorescence in the affected area so this is a picture of ischemic cr view you can see the blood vessels you can see the hemorrhages which are present in all the quadrants indicating that it is a central retinal vein occlusion and you can see the cotton wool spots and presence of cotton wool spot indicates that there is ischemia and this is ischemic cr view Coming to there are blood disorders as I told you which can lead to cotton wool spots specifically it's leukemia and in this case also you will see this hemorrhages but what is specific with leukemia is the presence of rot spot. Rot spot is nothing but the central clearing of the hemorrhage that you see over here so a hemorrhage in which you see a central area of clearing that is called a rot spot which is quite diagnostic of blood uh, cancers like leukemia. Coming to one more retinopathy which is associated with cotton wool spot and that is a Percher's retinopathy. It's a very rare condition which is usually associated with indirect trauma to the body. So anywhere there's trauma in the body that if it leads to a, a manifestation in the eye as bilateral decreased uh, vision loss and you have certain specific uh, signs associated with it then it is called Percher's retinopathy. So what is important for you to remember is that in Percher's retinopathy there is no ocular injury. There is injury somewhere else in the body and because injury elsewhere in the body can take many forms and therefore there are a lot of causes for the Percher's retinopathy. Now the signs are you will see large cotton wool spots. Some of them will get confluent and Along with that, we will have superficial peripapillary hemorrhages, which are very common. And we will see a Percher's flecken. Now, this Percher's flecken is diagnostic for the condition, which is actually quite pathognomic. And they are described as polygonal areas of retinal whitening with a clear demarcating line between the affected retina and the contiguous normal retinal vessel. And this demarcating line is usually about uh, 50 micrometers. Now, what did I tell you that the causes of Perchner's retino retinopathy is numerous and usually they are traumatic causes somewhere else in the body. So it could be head trauma, chest compression, long bone fractures, crush injury, orthopedic injury, weight lifting, uh, barrel trauma or bartered baby syndrome. Now, there are a lot of other causes in systemic causes also and these systemic causes usually uh, since they are non-traumatic they can cause Percher's like retinopathy. So the retinopathy will be very similar, but we call it as Percher's like retinopathy. And the true trauma will, is called the Percher's retinopathy. Now, as I told you, the flecken. The flecken is actually the uh, pathognomic of the Percher's retinopathy. And there will be these areas of retinal whitening, which are present polygonal in shape. And if you see, there is a space between these uh, fleckens and the blood vessel, which is flowing. And the reason for that space is because the uh, in Percher's flecken, the, it is the blockage of the pre capillary arteriole so those 
precapillary arterioles are the ones which are affected and that is the reason that the, the arteries that you see over here these are spared and therefore that area of sparing is present about 50 micrometers in infections the most common cause as i told you is the hiv aids or the immunodeficiency virus so cotton wool spots have been observed in as much as 50 percent of the aids patient so the reason is deposition of the immune complexes in the blood vessel of the retina and uh, these lesions usually are confined to the posterior pole and mostly near the optic disc so sometimes just a presence of cotton wool spot uh, should raise a suspicion of the patient being immunodeficient then there are systemic uh, collagen vascular disorders like the SLE which are associated not just SLE there are many causes and uh, they are quite uh, and presence of sighted bodies actually are evidence that there might be retinal vasculitis also sometimes. So they can occur singly or you can have uh, small numbers but mostly they are located in the posterior pole near the arterioles. Now there are three main causes uh, one is dermatomyositis have the systemic leukus erythematosus in which we have a typical butterfly rash and then we have scleroderma in which the facial expression will be fixed they will have a facial rash they will have very thick skins of the hand and therefore it's called scleroderma that is thickening of the skin and they have a typical beaking of the nose along with that there will be other associated conditions as we know episcleritis is very common with collagen vascular disorders so certain other manifestations will be present along with the presence of cord pool spot so this is a typical malar rash or the butterfly rash which is present in patients with SLE and then this is the heliotropic rash which is present around the eyes in patients who are suffering with the dermatomyositis then in scleroderma as you can see the thickening of the hands and the uh, associated erythema and this is a beaking of the nose which is present in patient with the, the uh, scleroderma then sometimes with acute uh, interrace of intracranial pressure we get acute papilledema and acute papilledema is associated with bilateral peripapillary cotton wool spots then patients who have undergone radio uh, radiation uh, for the treatment of various kind of cancers can also have radiation retinopathy and cotton wool spots can occur in radiation retinopathy and here it is basically the history which tells you about the diagnosis then some patients who have taken interferon specifically the interferon was given and administered for the hepatitis treatment so sometimes interferon administration is also associated particularly the high dosage is associated with cotton wool spot formation and they will res uh, usually they present about three to five months after the treatment will begin then sometimes there can be certain traumatic mechanical distortion like in case of epiretinal membrane we know that the epiretinal membrane is present just superficial to the nerve fiber layer and therefore when this membrane is going to contract or cause any uh, alteration uh, undergo any alteration it's also going to cause some alteration in the architecture of the nerve fiber layer leading to the formation of cotton wool spot and such cotton wool spots will not resolve on their own like the other retinopathy associated in cotton wool spots and they will usually go away only after the surgery so this was in detail about the cotton wool spot i hope you found it useful and if it was useful uh, kindly share it with your friends thank you and have a nice day